Okay, this is a cusk eel. And uh, it's making it hard for us to uh. see its face. So uh, we'll leave it be and uh, let's check out this bamboo coral. Um, if we could look right where it's sort of snarly and branching near the zim base. Zim, That's of interest to me. Zim, What's zim, going zim. on there? What we got. Yeah, so this is one of the sort of a sparsing, sparsely branching bamboo coral. And it's branching near the base and you can see how thick this coral is. It's hard and to see uh, the nodes at the base there, is it? Yeah, so or? it looks like the nodes were overgrown. So down oh, here, yeah. they might be overgrown. And that's why we're not seeing them. Wild. Okay, come wide, please. I gotta go. But I can't tell if it's internodal or nodal. It might be internodal. More Walteria sponges, those little hairy sponges. Oh, I'm talking about the animals. It's quite an array of different types of corals and sponges in this area. There's a number of different species of Chrysogorgia. It's just kind of hard to tell them apart from video alone. There's a Calyptrophora. Or these treat addicted glass sponges. Oh, that's a really nice size uh, hemichorallium. And there's a norella, some chrysogorgia, and then this yellow one over here, pretty certain that that's that staropathies that I was talking about. Amazing how planar these corals are. Yeah, that is that Ferrea neuroca erecta. Yeah, the, the hemichoralliums, yeah, always grow in that planar form. Their polyps are always located on one side um, that's facing away from the current, and the current will blow through that fan. So they usually orient themselves um, in the main direction perpendicular to the current.
Good morning, viewers. You'll hear a little bit of quiet as we go through a shift change, and then we'll introduce ourselves to you. 8 to 12 is joining now. All right, looks like everybody's getting settled in. My name is Lisa, I'm a Science Communication Fellow. Coming to you from Pacific Ocean, straight from Kansas. I'm a science teacher in Lawrence, Kansas, and enjoying this experience. It's been just incredible. I love every minute of it. So feel free to send your questions to the chat and we will get to them as our crew is available to answer those questions. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Just getting set up here. I know Adam's going to ask me how many meters till we get to how the summit. How many meters till we get to the summit? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 750 meters. Wow. Just settled out after a little minor blue water detour. And That's uh, horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Horizontal. Yeah. Wow. Shall we get moving? Yeah, let's do it. Or do you want to do anything here? I mean, can we zoom in on that sponge? Roger that. Did you get the name of it from Megan? Oh my god, it's too early. Let's see. All right, go gorgeous. ahead there, Dave. It's just like a primnoid on the right. No way. Sponge IDs are not on my forte. That's a... Uh, very large as well. You 
know, the the fact that they're all kind of white it makes it a little tough. Oh, look, there's a bit of a coral inside that sponge fell in there. Take a tour of these colonies over here. Uh, Chrysogorgia. Oh, you go ahead and come a little wide there. Militaris. Oh, it's this way. Wow, so much more diversity than we're seeing. Yeah, down. that's a good, yeah. Way to, good way to start a shift. Hello, Lisa from the Netherlands. What is the little gray thing bottom right? Is that a hold test or something living? Yeah, yeah thank you. It's a sponge, sponge right? Ronnie, did you say the white things are anemone? Sorry, what was that? Were you um, naming the little white things on the rocks? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Oh, is it that white? Uh, coral looks like a primnoid. Go ahead and push that in there, please, Dave. A healthy looking sponge. Okay, the sponge and hold fast. Thank you. Sure. Randy, are we uh, in the middle of a ship move or at the end of one? Uh, we're at the end of one. It's just kind of paused here. Did you want to? Yeah, let's call another one in. Okay. I'm going to go 200. Zero zero. 200, zero zero, Reg. Rich Nav. Step 100 meters, bearing 200, zero, zero, speed 0 0.2. Thank you, Martina. I'm going to do a partial here on all these communities, and we'll just fly over it a bit. That's great. Thanks, Dave. Lots of Chrysogorgia colonies. Yeah. yeah. Forest. Special good morning to my friends and family watching from the No Coast States. This is super cool and something that we've never experienced before. Can you tell what's on top of that Chrysogorgia? I'm going to say a crinoid, yeah? Looks like, yeah, a crinoid and maybe a brittle star as well. I can barely hear or you, Randy. Or no, Randy. it's a crab. What's that? I can barely hear you. Check, check. Can I push that in there, please, Dave? Am I turned down? Maybe. I'm like force listening to you. Force listening? Yeah. And it's still check, quiet. Check, check. Mm -hmm. So if you bump your uh, nav button to the left or right, it turns that individual yeah, volume up and down? Yeah, I did that. Hmm. Check. Right up against the mask. Uh, yeah, that's better. Okay, go ahead and come wide there, please. Jake, gonna bring your head to two zero zero, please. Two zero zero. Sarah, do you know how to make the 
science chat up here. Every time I get here, I turn like, do I need to hit general or? Oh, uh, just try refreshing. Sometimes that does this. Let's check. Oh, that next uh, lump behind looks also to be heavily colonized. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this whole kind of bumpy feature here. So can we call this the particles in the water? Would that be a good example of the marine snow? Yeah. Hey Jess, what's your heading relative to the direction the ship's moving right now? Are you headed that, you're heading that same direction? My heading is about 90 degrees off right now. So if I were to go heading of the ship right now, be something more like that okay can you uh are you able to go along that ridge we were just uh on for at least a little bit to see yeah, yeah it looks like 190 you, we could see it in argus here a little bit just that feature goes a little bit farther that that that's what appears to be that ridge there to the left that linear bit could possibly reacquire on the right as well right no just kidding I can change the ship move and bump over to it. I, I don't think it'll last very long, though. That like long it's her? That's the heading. Oh, that's the of her her heading. Yeah. Yeah, it seems just like a local one. Hey. All right. Well, let's if yeah. You can just follow it a little bit because it looks like a uh, yeah. yeah, sure thing. Its orientation is different than the main structure too. Yeah. Yeah, that is curious. We should be starting to think about off bottom at nine thirty. Lo okay. Local. Nine forty five might maybe, but we'll reassess. We have one plate left. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. I'm not uh, yeah, we should probably drop that one too. I believe that they already collected the final required rock yes where the rocks would be extracurricular we are really full on samples like the only thing that we have room for really is push core hey adam this is about as far as my tether gets me over here okay um well as you when you uh swung around to the direction of the ship move there would also seem to be a bit of a ledge or, or edge over there that Looked like it had a bunch of morals on it. So happy to go where the ship's going for now. Roger. Also, Adam, it's a little hard to hear you too. Test one, two. Yeah, okay. Spin around now. Can I control my own volume or is it? Uh, you just uh, talk louder and then <laughs> more <laughs> softer. <laughs> <laughs> so Walked the answer, right into that one. The answer is yes. So I can control <laughs> it for you uh, going into the system. Are you on the, you're on the right? Test one, two. 
Good morning. Oh. <laughs> okay. Much better. Maybe I'll, I'll start with the down. introductions. Uh, I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a professor at uh, University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography and director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, which is the sponsor of uh, this cruise through NOAA Office of Ocean Exploration. Cooperative Institute is a partnership between Ocean Exploration Trust, Rhode Island, University of Rhode Island, University of New Hampshire, University of Southern Mississippi, and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution that is um, sponsored by NOAA Office of Ocean Exploration to advance the technology and the human capital that conducts uh, ocean exploration. And I'm sitting in the watch lead chair. Next, um, next to the wonderfully talented Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm Sarah Bremer. I'm a geoscientist from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and I'm sitting in the data logger chair. Renato Kane, a navigator on this watch. Jess Sandoval, art pilot. Jake Bunny, Argus pilot. It's a very brief today. <laughs> uh, Dave Robertson, lead video engineer, and sitting in the video chair, trying to make pictures look good for y'all. It's been a great crew to work with. Someone asked what time it is. We are the 8 a.m. to 12 shift, 8 to 12 a.m. and p.m. So just a little after 8, 8.13. We are at the tail end of our second dive for the expedition, exploring unnamed Seamount G. We started at the base and we've been moving our way up in a line transect, making collections along the way and observations. So we're getting to see some beautiful corals and sponges that are sitting on uh, some fantastic volcanic rocks that we believe are quite old, erupted maybe as far back as 114 million years ago, and have been sitting around on the seafloor for so long they've been encrusted with a thick layer of iron manganese crust. We're interested the and push on in there. density and diversity of the biology, but also in the rocks themselves and the crust uh, that's on top of them. So it's real exciting to be exploring a seamount that's never been visited before, seeing what's here and trying to understand its geologic history. This is uh, relative to the watches we've done before which were lower on the seamount, there's a great deal more density and diversity of coral sponges and the associates. You see any scales on that thing, Renny? I think it's a primnoid. Okay. I still haven't seen the scales that he's talking about. I'm just going off of the <laughs> general morphology. Yeah. And yeah. a poor I've been understanding tricked before, of coral though. identification. <laughs> yeah. Right. Get a little wide there, please. Looks like those are barnacles on the yeah, lines of the one. rocks. Somewhat expected that we'd see more density and diversity yeah, ahead, here on the seamount. Because we're higher up where there <laughs> is uh also, at near the top of the seamount where there's much higher flow uh, of current, which brings the food to these filter feeders. You can see in this coral, a bunch of small brittle stars hanging out in 
the coral, away, in this case, not predating, I believe, the coral, but uh, finding a higher spot to do their filter feeding as well. One of our viewers, Logan, would like to know what is the coolest thing you've seen so far on this dive? Logan, I think you're seeing it. <laughs> I think so, too. Not yeah. that rocks aren't cool. We've seen a lot of rocks, so. Yeah, I don't know. Those really giant anemones were pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, I think that no, might be yeah. fine. It was neat seeing the, the one that was <laughs> active. It's looking like in Argus we have another, uh, it's starting to rise again in the direction we're going. One of our viewers asked if we take samples of things we find and what do we do with them? And we certainly do. And you heard our pilots mention a few minutes ago, our sampling capacity is pretty full right now. We've been collecting rocks along a transect, so as we move up the mount, up the seamount, collecting rocks kind of spaced out. And then also we have had a wish list from scientists who some of some of the scientists aren't even on board, things they are looking for for their research. So we've been collecting some biological specimens as well. Does someone want to talk about what we do with the specimens we collect? Sure, I'll talk about what we do with the, the rock sample. So um, with each rock sample, we're collecting a uh, Niskin bottle of the adjacent seawater. And for the iron manganese crust on the outside of the rock, graduate student Coralie Rodriguez uh, from University of Rhode Island is um, scraping off the very topmost layer of that crust and using um, high resolution uh, analysis tools to measure the composition of the especially the rare metals and comparing that to the oxygen concentration in the adjacent seawater so far in her research uh, she's seen a, a very nice correlation or negative correlation between oxygen concentration and cobalt concentration, which uh, would give us a tool to understand the distribution of uh, the kind of valuable rare metals in, in, in these crusts. Also be looking at the insides of the rocks, the, the basalt itself, looking at the composition and its affinity or similarity to the mid-Pacific mountains to the west and the Hawaiian chain to the north and east, as well as the radiogenic isotopes that uh, can help us identify the age of the, the rocks. Looked like there was a Paragorgia just out of frame, and now we've got the Iridogorgia in front of us here. Yeah, it looks like there is a precious coral, too. Yeah. For the biological samples, I think that there are taxonomic right studies, there. so looking at the form and structure of the organisms to try and identify them. In many cases, what we'll find are Dave, go ahead and push new on. species or uh, new ranges for known species. And... Uh, 
perhaps some genetic work as well, but that will be largely focused on environmental DNA, which will filter out of the water collected in the Niskin bottles on the port side of the, the vehicle. Go ahead and come a little wide there, please. Hey, Jess, can you turn off the lasers for this yeah. glamour shot? Oh, thanks, Jake. <laughs> Does this have a common name of firework coral? Is that... Or is that just what we kind of call it? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's what you kind of call it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I wrote but in I the like comments. <laughs> must be true. Okay. <laughs> hmm. All right, go ahead and come wind there, Dave. Oh, a little fishy again. One of the viewers is asking if we link the data findings of the samples uh, relating to each dive, and, or if there's a repository for the final studies somewhere linked with our website. Yeah, so uh, the answer is yes to both of those. So the, the samples go into... Uh, repositories. They're kind of like sample libraries for researchers to access. Uh, for the rocks, it's the uh, University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography Marine Geological Sample Laboratory. And for the biological samples, it's the Harvard Museum of Comparative Biology. And um, each sample is linked by the time it was collected to all the data that um, is collected by the vehicle, so that includes the, the video data, imagery, and sensor data that tells you about where on the seafloor it was collected and the environmental conditions. I think I just kind of merged all those answers into one, but time is the kind of important ID because time links it to all the other timestamp data that we collect. See an urchin over there. Looks like possibly a bathypathies over to the right. <laughs> Where do you see the urchin? Um, just lower up right. to the right, lower. A little purple thing. Oh, in the sediment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Primnoids in front of us, I think. These three fans, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, come down a little there, Jake. Can you tell what the white associate is in the primnoid? The white associate. No, oh, it's probably squat lobster. Yeah, I guess that too. Lots of little brittle stars in there, or maybe they're little crabs. Can't tell. Malteria sponges. Brassigorgia puffs. There's a mushroom coral right there, the little red one on the ground. Is that the urchin you were talking about, or the? Uh, that's the, the mushroom the coral. The, or oh. the urchin's that purple one over yeah, there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a really high diverse area. Another Ritigorgia behind the whole thing. If you want to push on in there a bit, please. Oops, sorry. Missed, missed my shot here. Does look like they're brittle stars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little squat lobster. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Come a little wide there. <laughs> sorry. 
Are you feeling a current, Jess? Yeah, yeah. bit of a current. Can you tell which direction it's going? Uh, we can go stick off in a minute and then okay. have a look. Okay, let's try that out. Go ahead of there again, Dave. Okay. Pull away, please. Okay, hey, Randy, on the two sonar screens is the left Argus and the right Herc? That's correct. So in Argus, we're heading generally towards an upslope. Looks like we'll hit a steeper part. Adam, one of our viewers is asking if this feature seems to be a caldera. Uh, no, it doesn't look like a caldera. On the on the map, it has a uh, kind of two peaks and a little bit of a valley between them. Um, none of the Seamounts in this in this unnamed chain have anything that looks like a, a caldera, but uh, can we get a zoom on this darker sediment, please? Yeah, sure. But we'll see what we see because you know sometimes the lower resolution of these maps can't identify a really you know, short wavelength, high relief features. And there could be small calderas or pit craters at the top of these. I think that's a Holothurian, the, the big purple one. It's interesting, these linear, that's you can true. see in an Argus. I don't know if those are... Feeding trails, perhaps, yeah, that then... Caused by feeding trails, or if they're something yeah, else? Yeah. I've seen some feeding trails through an area like this that kind of cleaned off the, or pushed the uh, little nodules out of the way, and they, they fall back in, they would look like a, like a little right, line. Right, Dave, push in yeah. please. Yeah. It's really cool. We got some samples of these mini nodules, which... My working hypothesis is that they would uh, eventually form a solid crust as the as the uh, iron manganese deposits started to merge together. Thank you. Yeah, full wide, please. One of our viewers is asking if you'd use microscopy on the rocks at all? Yeah, for sure. So uh, we will use a scanning electron microscope to look in detail. Also, it gives you kind of a, you can use it for kind of qualitative composition. And hopefully in the next year or so, I'm going to be uh, getting a, X-ray microtomography setup so that you can look at the uh, kind of internal structure of the rocks non-destructively, uh, but we'll also use traditional microscopy, uh, both transmitted and reflected light. But for the iron manganese crust, you won't get much transmitted light, so use uh, reflected light, which can uh, show you some of the the detailed structure as well. What's that floater? Oh, fish. fish. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave, and push on in there. Oop. <laughs> you shook <laughs> us off. <laughs> <laughs> Knew we were looking. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Some steeper relief up here. Raj. You can see the fish actually getting blown in the current too. Yeah. Looks like it's north or south to north ish. And it's kind of coming from the, let's see, our left to the right. Southwest to northwest? Something like that, yeah. Mm. A little bit of an angle on us. All right, I'll come up a little bit here. Our viewers is asking if the team will get a break for the holidays, and this is the last expedition for the season. So we'll be wrapping things up for 20th. New season starts in February. This talus is much more angular than we've seen. Is the camera panned down or are we going up a slope? We're going up a slope and we're panning a little down. Just panned up a bit more. Yeah, it looks like in Argus we are just now getting to the top of that wall or we'll just be looking over it, yeah. Viewers asking about our depth, we're right about yeah. 2,000 meters right now. Another. Precious, precious coral there to the bottom, <laughs> right? Hi, Cooper. One of my students would like to know what he could do to be a part of a project like this someday. Kind of depends on what role you're interested in. One thing to keep in mind is you check out the website, there are opportunities for college students to come aboard as interns. Go ahead and push on. Ooh, what that's interesting. That? <laughs> Would you like to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen this before. <laughs> oh, man. Life. This is definitely a new one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like when Dave, who has like yeah, can we millions that of off years of photo? experience, says I've never seen that before. I, I do not know what that is. Oh, is, yeah. oh no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. I, I thought that was intentional. This is the exploratory oh. grid feature. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I've never seen this before. Interesting. Huh. Um, okay. We may have to power cycle the camera in order to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Away. Can we get a zoom on those? Um, do you want to sit down before we? Specs too. Yeah, the, the, the coating the rock that will. When yeah. Jess is comfortable. You we can actually go ahead and I'll. I'll just fly off of your. All right. In there. Go ahead and cycle it. You guys are gonna power cycle the HD cam real quick, so it's gonna go black. Lovely. Now All right. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, that was. <laughs> that was really strange. <laughs> that was interesting. That was a weird one. No, yeah. No one pressed anything to even instigate. No. Yeah. Huh. All right. So you want the little specks? Yeah. Encrusting sponges here. Oh, we don't know what they're. Uh, e either barnacles or maybe those tiny stoloniferous corals. I want to check it out. Another thing you could do if you're interested in finding out more about careers, exploring the ocean, is go to the website and read the bios of some of the members of the Corps of Exploration, and you can get lots of information about their background and their advice. And there's even a little a little specks on this rock here. It's on here, right? Yeah. Personality quiz you can take. Kind of point you toward. I'm sorry, did you say personality quiz? Yes, I it's I wrote it into my students' uh, lesson plan for this coming week. So Cooper, you're going to be doing it anyway. I should take that. <laughs> Find out yeah. if you're in the right job. <laughs> kind of bossy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got my job, so. <laughs> <laughs> I 
One of our viewers from the Netherlands would like to know what we do with Hercules and Argus during the downtime before the next season starts. A lot of off-season maintenance goes on. Um, it's stable here. All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. be barnacles uh, yeah they look like tiny barnacles but i don't know if don't they're know. alive i don't know they're yeah yeah there's some white and some a little browner but right. i haven't seen that concentration of them yet all right i'm gonna start to boogie so full wide there dave for some reason i thought that was an encrusting sponge Jeopardy rules. <laughs> You're in the negative. <laughs> just starting off the watch. Hey. <laughs> so our hey points now. restart every time. Uh, <laughs> unless we have a massive whiteboard with all our points. Yeah. <laughs> there guys, I'm gonna go a little bit faster along this ridge to get caught up there, and then okay. uh, we'll slow down. Great news! We have a marine biologist joining us. <laughs> Renato Kane. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll be exposed for all the wrong ideas. Just finished breakfast and back for a double shift. Wow. Mm. Welcome, welcome. Jess, when you do get caught up, I'd love to do the little let go of the sticks and uh, see how we drift. Yeah, you can kind of see this is no sticks right now. You can see the current coming across my face there, but now I'm going to move. Ah, huh, that's quite a different orientation, though. Yeah. That seems to be east to yeah east to west rather than southeast to northwest. But well, that's pretty consistent, at least with the that dive we did up the east side of the first seamount, where it was a lot less sedimented than, than this one. But we'll have the opportunity to check that out on some of the other seamounts. Jess, when you get a chance, we have a question for you. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, one of our viewers would like you to describe the controls that you use to fly Hercules. Yeah, we have a joy box with a couple different joysticks on it. And that's really what we use for controlling Herc. And yeah, there's a couple different buttons that we use for controlling the pan tilt and um, other hydraulic functions. If you've ever seen the movie Minority Report, it is nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> what other movies is it, is it nothing like that? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Let's begin yeah. with Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Oh, uh, disagree. <laughs> One of our viewers is asking if uh, the Nautilus has ever been in the Gulf of Mexico. It has. Yes. Heck yes. <laughs> we were there in uh, 2013, 2014, and first part of 2015. Sailed through the Panama Canal. Oh, were you on for that? I was, yeah. I have never gone through the canal. That'd it was be pretty really cool. cool. Yeah, it was at night. Fun right. experience. Adam, you ready for this? Uh, yep. Okay. I'm on no sticks now. You can keep it. You can see it actually come in more towards our face now. Let's shift the directions a little. It's going to go due south on the next move. Roger. What's that? Bridge now. Uh, step 100 meters, 180. So it's like a little southwest, this. Thank you. You can kind of see it in the in the Doppler screen there, just which direction we're going. Yep. Okay. 
Great, thank you. One of our viewers is wondering if in this depth we've ever encountered what would be considered an invasive species. Hmm. Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, the answer is we don't actually know uh, because this is the first time we're exploring this area. So um, it wouldn't be known if uh, there was a species that was invasive or not because this is our first time being here and seeing it. So everything that's here, we're just sort of assuming has always been here. Um, yeah, it's a cool question. I don't think I've been anywhere in the deep sea where invasive has been associated with any organism. There's like colonizers and, and, and yeah, organisms fun. that come in later. They're like successions, mm -hmm. uh, but I've never been like seen anyone describe something as uh, as invasive. That's cool. Exactly. Uh, in some shallower areas, we do know of a couple corals that could be considered invasive. For example, um, shallow depths where black corals grow uh, off the coast of Hawaii. Those are the black corals that have been collected for the jewelry trade. Um, they're within tentacle diving depths, but not uh, recreational diving depths. So it's considered deep, but not not deep like we're doing today. Um, there is a coral, Carajoya ricii, that grows on top of those black corals, and that is considered invasive. It was brought here um, by a ship, we believe. Um, unintentionally? Unintentionally. Uh -huh. And it does grow on top of the black coral, smothering it and um, and killing those those corals. So that would be considered an invasive example of an invasive coral. And so when I've worked uh, in the Galapagos Marine Protected Area, they have uh, certain protocols to clean the ship's hull before before you go in. Uh, I think that's mostly for for shallow species. But uh, does the PHNM have also have a requirement to clean the ship before you go into their waters? Yes. Uh, so the Papahānau Mokuākea Marine National Monument does require all ships entering the monument to have a hull cleaning and hull inspection before they are allowed to leave port for their expedition. That's great. Yeah, it's really important that we all do our part to, to reduce any spread of organisms to locations where they're not supposed to be. That's why if you do visit Hawaii, uh, you'll notice that uh, we do have an agricultural station that keeps you from bringing in and taking out uh, living organisms. So you're not allowed to bring in any plants or animals without direct permission to do so. And you are not allowed to take things. Here's a really fun looking sponge. This look, oh wow, that's a big circle. <laughs> I just did to circle the whole screen. Yeah. This is a fun looking ocean. <laughs> ocean. Yeah, so this uh, looks like an Atlantis cella. It's a type of glass sponge in the family Euplectelidae. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and push on in there, Dave. Oh, I've only seen them in like the tiny little spheres. Exactly, yeah. So they start off as like little, little dishes or cups. Um, usually really round, but when they get old, they start to fold in on themselves. Wow. But you see that it's all coming and attaching in that center point here. So it's sort of an older version the of the uh, Atlanticella. Yeah, it's from the restart. Oh, so Megan, cool. you've described right. the sponges as a collection of no. cell, individual cells that make up the organism. I, right. That sounds like a stupid statement now that I say <laughs> that. Uh, but is, is any individual cell considered an organism in itself? No. It, yeah, a single cell in a sponge is not considered its own organism in the way that a single polyp in a coral is considered its own organism. Okay. 
but the cells within the sponge do uh, differentiate themselves to have different jobs. Yeah, that's and they so work that together. where I was getting. There's like the, the stem part and the head part and the hold fast part. And yeah, you have the cells inside that are working on moving water throughout the sponge body, the ones that are feeding and, and uh, digesting food. So you, they, all, they all work together in the same way that cells in your body might work together. But sponges are more of a primal version of an organism. So they're not as complicated. They don't have organs and, and uh, things like that. And so how do they reproduce? Uh, they will spawn. OK. And they can do some fragmentation? And there, it is possible for them to do fragmentation. So if a piece of a sponge is broken off and it's able to settle, it's likely that they might be able to regrow. This might not be true for every spe species of sponge, uh, but it is possible in some sponges. Is there some kind of critical mass that has to break off? Um, likely. Uh, something too small might not regrow. Uh -huh. That's true. But not a lot of work has been done on deep sea sponge reproduction, uh, especially in terms of fragmentation. It's just one of those really hard things to study, especially since we're still in that exploration phase and we can't really bring these animals into our lab and study them easily. They also grow extremely slowly, so we might be sitting around for a while to actually see the whole process. Right. We had a question about how sponges grow since they are operating more at a cellular level. Do you have any explanation to share about that? How they grow? Um, well, I mean, they, they grow like most organisms. They'll start from a larva at, that settles down onto a rock. So any one of these really nice rocks uh, looks like a good place for a sponge. And the cells will divide and they will gather silica from the water in order to form their skeleton and uh, start building their sclerites. So each one of these sclerites is a small microscopic piece. Some sclerites are less than microscopic, which you can actually see them if you zoom in. And those get built and to form the framework of the sponge body. And they just keep doing that until they get to the sizes that we're seeing. The, the sclerites first and then the tissue? Um, Tissue first tissue and, then and then they build the sclerites. sclerites. Okay. And one of our viewers is asking, are there less corals and sponges in the ocean than there used to be? And I, I would say we probably don't know because this is a first exploration of this seamount. And in general, this technology to explore is pretty new, right? Right, yeah. So we definitely haven't finished discovering all the corals and sponges in the deep sea. Um, so there are a lot more corals and sponges down there than we know about. So we have a lot of work left to do. Ooh, um, can we zoom that? Sure, on the coral back there. Thinking this might be a black coral in a fan shape. Be a little bit farther away, zoom so I don't hit the other corals yet. Go ahead and push on in there, please. It looks kind of soft to me. Oh, yeah, nope, it's not a black coral. It's a Chrysogorgia that's growing in a planar form. So um, here and here, we have those sort of bushy Chrysogorgias, 